look at the experts who actually planned for this, who actually have documents written about this. So if you look at a mash who tracked this and who's written about it before and during, nobody thought in no doc plan document in the CDC in preparation for a pandemic, global pandemic, is lockdowns even a possibility? Is an option. So this was this was a this was a from the hip shooting from the hip out of nowhere based on no science, no data, nothing. Okay, now Amish has a number of times warned against the hospitals becoming overrun. Though, so so solve that right. So there are lots of ways to deal with hospitals. Now again, I don't disagree that given the ineptitude, given how bad it was in mid March because they did nothing all of February and the first half of March that you had no option but to shut down New York probably, but not the rest of the country, I don't think. But um, if you take, but it's if, hard take to all of those, but if you take just the shortages in hospital, if they had just looked at the hospitals in, in late January when, they, when, he, when he shut down travel from, from China, so he knew it was a problem, mm -hmm. and they said, okay, hospitals could be overloaded, Right. And they ramped up production of ventilators and ramped up production of PPE. Tests. And, mm -hmm. and they ramped up production of tests, which they completely screwed up. And they ramped up and they brought the army in to build field hospitals, which they ultimately did, but, but it was too late, too little, too late. Then I doubt any of the closures. So you can't, you can't say the closures are justified when the government has failed in everything it has done. And of course, even by your standards, there was no mea culpa. There was no, no two-week closure. There was nothing. So no. No. if they had done all those things and then come to the conclusion, yes, in order to really protect the rights of doctors and so on over the next two weeks, we need to shut down New York. Fine. But they didn't do any of that. So the less they do and the less information they have, because they had no information. Remember, they don't know how. We still don't know. Well, how okay. Again, they had a lot of information about the deaths and they suspected probably China was covering up. In Italy, it was just carnage. Oh, and no, it wasn't that many deaths in China. If you look back, I wish, I wish we only had China, right? If that was the standard, then they shouldn't have shut down anything. Um, well, but Italy, China, of course, China. shut down more draconian way than we did here. Yeah, but Italy was a disaster, but nobody knows why it was a disaster. And Italy shut down in massively draconian ways and yet it was still a disaster. It's an ongoing disaster, even right now. And it's, it's, we didn't have real information about why Italy was Italy and, and why um, other countries are not Italy. And yet we acted out of, in, in California, elsewhere, I mean, they acted out of fear and ignorance. And you cannot have government shutting down out of fear of ignorance. They need to have data, information, and a plan. Again, the burden of proof is on them. And I don't think Gavin Newsom had provided the burden of proof. I don't think... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Como did the only place okay, I well, I'm, I'm, I'm shut down is, is New York City. And maybe as it rolled away in, in New Orleans and Detroit and a few other hot spots, but you first have to identify a hot spot and then shut it down. You can't claim that the whole of California is a hot spot. That is by all standards just untrue and, and invalid. Nothing about California is like Italy, certainly not the Central Valley or other places or, or the, or the, or the Pacific, you know, no, culture. no. And I mean, I, I agree that Newsom didn't uphold his side and still is not. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, at one point, he had ordered nursing homes to take in again patients who had been infected with COVID 19. Same. Nursing yep. homes, mm -hmm. we know now, we know now that nursing homes are one of the worst places. Why? Because of the air circulated throughout the whole place. That's part of the big things is when you've got a central air system circulating among all these people, some of whom are infected and some are not, it's going to be just a hot zone for spreading. So he, he has done everything. He's in the program notes for today, by the way, in terms of the stealth power grabs going on here in California, it's at all levels of government right now. And so I agree with you. I mean, the lockdown weeks ago should have been ended at the very least, even if they had done it exactly properly from the beginning. And I think you and I could argue about whether way back when the knowledge would have justified some sort of a very limited measure, hey, we're going to ramp up some testing for a couple of weeks and see what in the world we're dealing with, and then sure, but there go was on no with lives. Sure, there was no limited anything. They didn't ramp up testing, and they no. still haven't ramped up testing. Yeah. So the conclusion has to be everything they did was wrong. And, and, I, and I think that one has to condemn them.
who went through it every step because they didn't do they didn't do anything right. They didn't, and they still haven't, and they still not. And they, I think, I think if they told people, I think you have to start by voluntarily asking people to self quarantine and to self do self lockdowns before you have a statewide or, or you know, what two thirds of the nation was, was in lockdown. Well, there were recommendations for social distancing that came out first, as I recall correctly, before there was an actual lockdown. They should have pushed that down. And then they showed people at the beach in Florida, but in New York, I don't know that people ignored those. And it just, it's, it just is not, again, the burden of proof for such an extreme measure of shutting you down your home. I mean, you can, the government can do it. I've given examples of where the government can do it. You know, remember the, the Boston Marathon bomber, bombing mm. and, and, and they were out and they were looking for the, now I think they overdid it even in Boston because they, they always overdo the city. But they could have shut down the neighborhood. We're looking for the terrorists. Don't go out. It's your life. And, and you're going to interfere with police operations. Yes. But you cannot just say they're terrorists in town. We're not sure what they're going to target. They're, they're going to shoot people in the street, but we're not sure what street. And uh, this in some city in the United States, so the whole United States needs to be shut down. No, you have to have specific evidence about a specific threat. Right, right, right. Okay. And, and I, I agree with that in principle, but again... Okay, today, suppose everybody just says, okay, I'm going to assert my right to go out and take my life in my own hands and just go do what I want. And then the doctors cannot refuse to treat you no matter how careless and reckless and stupid you are and how much you endanger them and everybody else. And again, we do know what we do know about this virus is that you can walk around with no symptoms and have it and be contagious. So it's a horrific virus, but look, there is a price to pay for the mixed economy. People are going to die who shouldn't die. People are going to suffer who shouldn't suffer. Yeah, that. and I would like to preserve healthcare workers. So at and the I very at the very least, your own, your own, your own. At, all our rights. At the very in least. To, in order to prevent. Something. At the very least, at the very least, I think you and I could agree that it would be selfish to take certain measures to reduce the risk to doctors and nurses so that those resources at least are available for us if and when we need them for Open anything, them. not well, just COVID. I think it would be selfish to, to reduce the risk because we all have uh, people we care about and loved ones who are uh, older and so on. And, and, and you want to reduce the risk, period. The question is whether you do it voluntarily or through coercion. And, and every time you give the state the power to do these things through coercion, you are in a world in which we live, you're creating a very, very dangerous precedent. Yeah, no, I mean, you are. And, and so this has to be, you know, the ability to just shut down and nobody's challenging it. And because I think, well, a lot of people are challenging it now. What I, what I'm afraid of is that they're challenging it in an irrational way. They are, they should, they should use the Israeli example where the protests. That was beautiful. It's amazing. All stood six feet from one another and, uh, and did it responsibly but um, that that was beautiful that was beautiful okay so we i guess disagree about whether there was any lockdown justified at all even in today's economy no, I, I, I say I, there there way of, there would have been maybe a very short lockdown but both of us agree that regardless the government has not upheld its part of the bargain there doesn't think, need to be lockdowns anymore as i said i don't think there was any option but to lock down new york for for, for a while yeah Things were so bad there, but they, we have to recognize that they were bad because of government ineptitude two and a half months ago. Well, not only though, because I mean, I think again, you know, the biggest thing that we've learned recently about this virus, right, is its transmission in those closed Look spaces. At North Korea, or oh, South Korea, I keep saying North Korea. Look at South Korea. Look at Taiwan. Look at how these countries handle it. Look at Iceland. Look okay, but are they New York City in terms of public transportation, subways, and all that stuff? Maybe not, but but just it, it, it it's order of magnitude was in New York City because what they did in those places effectively and aggressively and amazingly. I mean, these are very very high population and high population density places, not as quite as New York. But if you look at Seoul, South Korea, now there are unique characteristics to South Korea and to Taiwan, but what differentiates them is their aggressive testing. And, and if you had put testing all over New York and you had uh, put testing and look, New York, the people who mainly suffered were in Queens, the Bronx and Brooklyn. If you'd just gone into those neighborhoods, aggressively tested, aggressively isolated people who had it. And tracing, not waited, contact tracing. Not waited, but started doing that 
uh, in, you know, in February, not waited until March, then you could have prevented the overload to the hospitals. And look, hospitals in the end were not overloaded, even with the pathetic response that we had, but because we shut everything down, but we shut everything down late. So if you had actually done the contract tracing, but primarily the testing and isolating and, and some contract tasting, I don't think we could have done it quite as effectively as Koreans. You would have had a lot of people die, but you wouldn't have overloaded the hospitals, I don't think. And, and healthcare professionals would have still been struggled, but they struggled anyway. And you would have not violated, you, you would have not constrained the ability of people to live their lives. And maybe you still would have had it shut down New York for two weeks. I'm not ruling that out, but then yeah. it would have been finite. It would have been over. Whereas this way, because no. you're flattening the curve, yeah. flat, the whole idea of flattening the curve is the same number of people are going to die. They're just going to die over a longer period of time. But what's happened now is nobody wants to undo the lockdowns because people are still dying. And, sure. and, and, it, and, and so people are still dying. So the press of doing undoing the lockdowns when people are still dying. But that was the whole point of the lockdowns. It wasn't no, the and then and then I wonder if some of the governments are manipulating the numbers, you know, because of course now if you increase the testing, which a lot of them they're doing in California now, they're finally starting to test people who aren't even uh, symptomatic, et cetera. Um, the more testing you do, the more cases are going to be revealed. And when people look at those case numbers, they get all freaked out again, right? Um, they're oh, doing the things out. to perpetuate this. Hmm? It's the other way around, though, because as you look at the case numbers, you look at the mortality rate, the mortality rate is plummeting. So the mortality rate is actually going down dramatically because- with I'm actually seeing it about steady here locally, but yeah. Not, um, if you, not if you compare it to the number of people who have it based on the serological tests. Okay, well, I'll have to look at some more. I'm just looking at very local stats and it's about the same. Local stats of people who have it versus- um, people who died, that's fairly static. Yeah. But then if you, if you think about who really has it, right? Not the people who tested positive, but those people who really have it, which is a much bigger number then you divide. Well, and that's what I want to know. I want to know that in a more reliable way than what we've seen. Ready, and so ready. I'm thinking I'm going to go, I have to go get my two antibody tests myself to find out if I've. You already know it because people, the only people who allow it to be tested in most of the country are people who have already symptoms. And That's changing know, here. That's changing yeah, here. No, it's changing, but so far. So we know that the people who are tested are the people who are highly likely to have it. Oh, Those sure. People who are not tested have the low high likelihood. So there's a lot of people who weren't tested. Yeah. Even the 90% don't have symptoms sure. who have this. Huge population of people who have this who have not been tested. Mortality rates uh, are, are probably around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, which is what, funnily enough, what Amesh Adol just said they were in February, he said it was 0.6. And that's about what you're seeing. So yeah, he, was, he, he had a really good prediction. Excellent. Yeah, I would like to talk with him about some stuff too. That would be great. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So. I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to youronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...